Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop, your weekly podcast to help you get more from Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to talk all about tools. Tools let you do all sorts of things in Photoshop, from make a selection to darken an area by hand. Knowing how to select your tools and quickly switch between them will speed you up. Speed means you can get more billable work done, means that you can actually go home more, means you'll see your family more. So all of these are great things. Now, let's take a look how we can quickly grab our tools and start to do things inside of Photoshop with them. Tools by default are going to be located here in the Tools panel. And there's a lot happening with this. Now, some people choose to view their Tools panel in a double column view. These people likely worked with Photoshop for a while when the toolbox was actually two columns wide. That works fine, but in order to make things a little more efficient, because monitors are so big now, they went to a one column view. But if you want to switch, just click that little arrow there and it'll switch between. If you're working with an image full screen, you can press the letter F. And you'll see it goes full screen, press it again, and everything gets hidden. But if you want those tools to come back, no big deal. Pressing the Tab key will pop them back on, and then Tab and they go away again. So if you want to change screen modes or hide your tools, just press Tab. If you press Shift Tab, it'll bring back just the things there on the side for the panels. F will get us out of our full screen mode back to normal here. You can also click here and see you have standard screen mode, full screen with menu bar, and a regular full screen mode. Now, the tools all have shortcuts, and by default, you'll see their name and a letter. As long as you didn't modify the preference that said Show Tool Tips, then you'll get these as you roll over. You'll see there that, for example, this is the Marquee Tool, which is used for selections. If I click, I can access other types of Marquee Tools, like an elliptical marquee right below the rectangular. There it is. And this tool allows you to make an elliptical selection. Hold down the Shift key, and it becomes a circle. So that's useful if you need to make a circular selection within the object. Same sort of thing, we have the Rectangular Marquee Tool, which allows us to make a rectangular selection, or hold down Shift, and it goes to a perfect square. Now, all of these tools have special purposes, and we'll use tools throughout our lessons. What I want you to, though, learn is how you can actually select a tool. So, when we move over that tool there, we'll see its name and its shortcut. The Marquee Tool is M for Marquee. So, if I have another tool selected, such as the Move Tool, which is actually the letter V, because M was used for marquee, think move, V, I could switch to the marquee by pressing the letter M. Now, if I want to switch to the next tool within the well, I could do that. Notice that the next tool also has the shortcut M. If I press the letter M again, nothing happens. By default, Photoshop wants you to hold on the Shift key and press M to indicate you want to go to the next tool. Press it one more time, and it switches to the next one available with a shortcut. Now, that works great, but if you don't like having to hold down two keys, my personal opinion is that keyboard shortcuts should use as few as keys possible. You could simply press Command or Control K and uncheck the box next to Use Shift Key for Tool Switch. Now, you just press the letter M, and you can quickly switch between the two marquees. Same thing for the lasso tool, L for lasso. We have our regular lasso, our polygonal lasso, and our magnetic lasso. And we could just switch between. For example, here's the magnetic lasso attempting to make a selection as we draw along the edge here. And it does okay. There are better tools in my opinion, but you see how that tool works. And it's making a basic selection for us there. So, lots of easy things. You want to learn those keyboard shortcuts? Piece of cake. You just go over to the tool itself and hold your mouse over it, and it will tell you the name of the tool. So, for example, the Quick Selection tool and the Magic Wand tool both share the same drawer and the keyboard shortcut W. I'm not going to go through every other keyboard shortcut here. Just roll over the individual ones, and you'll see their name and their respective keyboard shortcuts. I do want to mention, though, at the bottom down here, you'll often start to do things with colors as you're designing and painting. A useful shortcut is the letter D, which will load the default colors of black and white. This is going to come in handy when you have to mask or start to touch up details. The letter X will toggle between foreground and background color. A good mnemonic for that is Devil's Xylophone to load your default colors. 
and that's going to come in handy in some of our upcoming techniques we'll explore. Now, as you pick an individual tool, you'll notice that the options bar up here changes. Depending on which tool you have, different properties become available. So for example, if I select the gradient tool, which is the shortcut G, the actual gradient loads up and we could pick from different presets. Or click on the swatch there to load the gradient editor and actually customize the gradient to taste. The options bar also offers additional things such as changing the shape of the gradient as well as its blending mode and opacity. Every tool has its own options, so the tools panel and the options bar are going to work together to tell you how to get the most from your particular tools. A couple more things that are pretty cool. A lot of times you're going to be working and you're going to want to do a few things. So for example, we might have our paintbrush tool up and we might need to paint a little bit of color. If you're painting and you want to temporarily switch to the eyedropper, just hold on the option key and you could sample a color and then paint with it. Coming a little further over and you want to sample the color again, option click to load it and then paint. And you see how that samples without having to switch tools. Same sort of thing can happen. You might be using another tool. Let's say you're in the text tool, but you want to really quickly switch over to the move tool. If you press and hold the key, it will switch tools. I can go ahead and press the letter V and switch to the move tool, and I'm still holding the key down. If you look closely here, you'll see my hand is actually still on the keyboard. This is called spring-loaded tools. If you're in a tool and you just go ahead and want to switch to another tool, press and hold the key down. When you release, it will switch back to the tool you previously had selected. So that works very well. And couple of useful shortcuts. If you're using any tool and you want to switch to the move tool, just hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC and you'll see that it will switch between those two tools. Likewise, if you want to go ahead and use the hand tool, which allows you to navigate around the image, just hold down the space bar and you can actually navigate through the picture and even throw it around until you get it in the exact place you want as you're moving. So, what all the tools do as subjects for lots of other video tutorials, but I wanted you to know where to find your tools, how to access them, and how to control their options. The more comfortable you are with Photoshop, the more you can get done. Speaking of getting things done, be sure to visit our blog at rastervector.com where you'll find all sorts of things that you can get hands-on with. We've got additional tutorials, we've got downloadable files for readers of our books, as well as cool things you could do, fun distractions, blog posts, industry news. My name's Rich Harrington. Be sure to check it out at rastervector.com. And of course, if you like our show, go ahead and subscribe for free. You can pick it up over at iTunes or over at Adobe TV and get it delivered to you each week. Thanks again.